In Lesson 5.1, what we're going to do is we're going to show how patterns can help us solve problems when we are dividing a decimal by a power of 10. Now, if you recall in Chapter 4, we also used patterns to help us find products when we were multiplying a decimal by a power of 10. For example, if we had 3 and 65 hundredths and multiply that by 10, we know that the answer would be 36 and 5 tenths. Now we know that because if this decimal that's located in between the 3 and the 6 moves over to the right one place, that would make the product 36 and 5 tenths greater, 10 times greater, than the 3 and 65 hundredths that was originally one of the factors. Same holds true if we took 3 and 65 hundredths and multiplied it by 100, that decimal would move forward two places and the answer would be 365. Essentially what we did was we created more places on the whole number side of the decimal. Here there was only one place on the whole number side of the decimal, which was 3. We multiplied it by 100, that decimal moved over two places, and as you can see now we have three whole numbers uh, to create 365. Same held true here. Since we multiplied it by 10, that decimal moved over one place, so therefore we had one extra number on that whole side of the decimal. Now the same concept holds true when we are dividing by powers of 10. Let's take a look. If we have 36 and 5 tenths and we divide that by 10, well, I know that number is going to have to be smaller because I'm, I'm dividing it into, into 10 groups. So patterns of, of division will tell us that since we're dividing it by 10, that decimal is not going to move forward because that would make the number larger. That decimal would have to move backwards one place and we would get 3 and 65 hundredths would be the answer. Same thing holds true if I divided 36 and 5 tenths by 100. If I'm dividing 36 and 5 tenths into 100 groups, that decimal can't move forward because the answer would then be larger than 3, 36 and 5 tenths. We have to take that 36 and 5 tenths and divide it equally into 100 groups. Therefore, that decimal is not going to move forward. It's going to back up. Now, it's going to back up two spaces, and it's backing up based on how many zeros there are in the power of 10. It backed up one space for the first example because it was, uh, there was one zero in the 10. It backed up two spaces in the second example because of the two zeros in the 100. And the answer would be... 365 thousandths. Because we know from our place value chart that each place we go to the left, it increases by 10 times as much. And we also know that when we go back to the right on our place value chart, it's one tenth of the place in front of it. So one last example, if I have 242 divided by 100, you may be wondering, well, there's, we don't see a decimal in 242. But we know if this is a whole number and this is the ones place right here, we always know that that decimal comes right after that ones place. So if there's a whole number, you have 242, we know that decimal is directly after that ones place, and we follow those same steps if we're dividing it by, let's say, 100. That decimal is going to back up two places, and we'll have our answer, our quotient of 2 and 42 hundredths. You also can write 242 divided by 100, and you could write the uh, 100 as an exponent. So the second power of 10, which really means 10 times 10, which is really 100, it would be the same exact answer because 242 would be divided by the second power of 10, which is really 100, 
And the answer would be, as it was before, 2n 42 hundredths. So that's how we could use decimals, uh, patterns of, of division with decimals when we're dividing by a power of 10.